Hello everyone, this is Kyle Wasserman coming to you from inside the Pokemon World Championships in glorious Vancouver. Uh, those screens behind me are where they're, they're streaming and broadcasting the matches, the final matches today even. My question today is, how much do Pokemon matter? A in terms of this level of tournament, like how much is a Pokemon a, a creature and how much is it just numbers and statistics and a moveset? I'm honestly not sure, so let's try to find out. Pokemon are everywhere at this event. They're on the cards, they're on the tables, they're wandering the hallways. But today's question is how important are the Pokemon? When the game itself can be boiled down to a game of numbers, how significant to the competitors are the illustrations that we associate with those numbers? I want to speak to how the Pokemon are, are more than a move set and more than a, some statistics. How important do you think the actual creatures are to like making this whole thing work? At the core of Pokemon is collecting, battling, and trading. So the collecting is the key part. You find your favorite Pokemon, you find all the Pokemon, everyone has their new approach to that. So when you get to this level, when you're competing with them, you've got your favorites, but you've also got the ones that are strong for battling. You have the cards that are strong for uh, your deck. It's actually a, a very complex process. How much do the, the Pokemon themselves matter to you, the creatures on the card and the pictures? When building a deck and competing, uh, very little. I will say that, you know, I do have favorite Pokemon. If it happens so that one that I like I get to play with, I might have a bias towards that deck instead of a different deck. Just not be like, I have to play my favorite Pokemon. What if someone opens with a Farfetch'd? What are you going to do? Uh, probably win. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about your Pokemon as, as Pokemon? Do you do you get attached to them, or do you try to like keep them like separated so you don't feel bad when they get knocked out? Uh, I, I don't think I get that attached. I mean, in the end, they're just digital creatures. Are there some like garbage Pokemon where you're just like, what are you doing? Does that ever happen when you're playing someone in a tournament? Well, not at the World Championship, but yeah, at regionals you might have some newer players using some Pokemon like that. Sometimes you feel a little bad, but you just have to beat them, just do what you do. However, I eventually found that selections are made on a purely strategic basis, but also that each of the competitors does have a certain affection for the franchise. Nobody plays Pokemon if you don't like Pokemon. Just for fun before the tournament, I watched like YouTube videos of my Pokemon in the show just because just it like, gave me a laugh, but at the same time it was kind of cool. It sort of adds to your appreciation of the character, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really help my gameplay and it doesn't really affect much, I suppose, but it's, it's still kind of a fun way to kind of get in the spirit of, of worlds. So a lot of people, they bring a Pokemon with them to put on the table. You do a unique thing, you, you make your Pokemon face your opponent. Is there a reason for that? I kind of just, you know, like like them facing towards them as if I were, and you know, it, it, I think it's just kind of intimidating sometimes to see a bunch of plushies just lined up there, and they go, you know, wow. So it's just good fun, you know. But I think there's some level, I guess, affection because you know they they've done a lot for me. You know, they're winning me trips, they're letting me travel around the country playing a video game. So I have some bond with them for sure. So uh, do you feel for a Pokemon when it when it gets knocked out, not only personally but just for that creature? <laughs> Deeply. Who's your favorite Pokemon on your team? Favorite? Yeah. Mamoswine, yeah. obviously. <laughs> that Mamoswine was so clutch, and nobody uses Mamoswine. That was so crazy. Mamoswine was the key to win all my matches this year. What made you think of Mamoswine? It's a very fast Mamoswine to kill uh, uh, opponent genies and dragons. Uh, it worked pretty well during all matches. Who's your favorite on your team? Uh, my favorite on my team today would probably be Rotom Wash, but my favorite overall is Scizor, which I actually basically use in every team before this tournament this year. Are you going to miss your old Pokemon? Yeah, they, they fought the good fight last year. They're getting a nice rest in uh, the PC, which is where you put them. I'd like to thank them for their time last year, but this year I'm going with some new guys. What is your favorite Pokemon? My favorite Pokemon right now is Fennekin. It's a new one coming out. I've always been a fan of the fire starter, so for me it's exciting. What if it evolves into something gross? <laughs> hmm, I think I might have some insight into that. You probably already know, don't you? <laughs> I do, I do. And so there you have it. In the end, if you're going to compete on this level, at some point, yes, yeah, so you can't just put your favorite Pokemon out there and hope for the best. There are certain abilities, certain statistics, and certain moves that you will need. However, at the same time, uh, not a lot of franchises can just exist on, on the shoulders of numbers. The creatures themselves are important in some mysterious way, in some uncapturable way, in some ways very unique to this one singular franchise. So uh, that concludes part two. In part three, we're going to look forward to the future. We're going to look at Pokemon X and Y. And I hope to see you then. Until then, this is Kyle Bossman signing off.